Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel Depth First. In this session, we will be exploring the core concepts of the tri data structure. So a tri data structure is also known as a prefix tree. It is a specialized tree data structure used for efficiently storing either strings or words. The reason why it's called a prefix tree is because words with similar beginnings share the same branch. So this makes finding words with a specific prefix really fast. So some real life applications of tri data structure are autocomplete, spell check in word editors and word games like Boggle. So you can think of a tri as a super organized way to store and find words based on the prefixes. And with that, let's outline what we'll cover in this video. So here is what we'll cover in this video. We will understand the tri data structure in detail, which means we will go over the tri nodes and edges and its hierarchical structure. We will review some common operations that can be performed on tri, and we will also walk through a programming challenge using tri. A tri node is the fundamental building block of the tri data structure. Each tri node holds a character, a flag indicating whether it marks the end of the word and a dictionary containing pointers to all its child nodes. So next we will construct the entire tri data structure and insert a few words into it. So this is the root of our tri data structure and the first word we'll insert is cat. We'll process each character one by one, creating a tri node for each character and then inserting it. The first character to insert is C, so we'll add C to Ruth's child nodes and its value will be a tri node representing the character C. The next character we'll add is A to C's child nodes and its value will be a tri node representing the character A. The last character we'll add is T to A's child nodes and its value will be the tri node representing the character T. Since we have reached the end of the word, we will change the is word end flag to true as represented by the green color here. The next word we'll add is car. The prefix ca already exists in the try, so we'll add the character r to a's child nodes. Its value will be a try node representing r. Next, we'll add the word cap. Since cap shares the same prefix as the previous two words, we will add p to A's child nodes and its value will be a tri node representing P. So next we'll insert the word Thai. Now Thai does not share any prefixes with existing words. So we'll add T to Ruth's child nodes and then insert the remaining characters in a similar manner. So with that, let's now insert a couple of more words to this try. The next word we'll add is cart to this try. Since the prefix car already exists, we will insert the character T into R's child nodes. The last word we'll add is cape. As the prefix cap already exists, we will insert the character E into P's child nodes. So hopefully this walkthrough has helped you understand how to insert words into the tri data structure. So with that, now let's review the code for creating this tri. Before we proceed, if you are enjoying the content of this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video. Your support means a lot to me as it keeps me motivated and it helps others as well. Thank you. The first thing we'll do is define a class called try. In its constructor, we will initialize the root of the try to point to an instance of the try node class. Let's go over the insert function. It takes a word as an argument. If the word is empty, the function returns immediately as there is nothing to insert. The variable current node is initialized to the root of the try and will be used to traverse the try. It then iterates over each character in the word. For each character, it checks if the character is already a child of the current node. If the character is not present, it adds a new try node for that character. The current node is then updated to the try node of this character. After all characters are processed, the last node is marked as a word end by setting is word end to true. If L is the length of the word that we are trying to insert, the time complexity will be O of L 
and the space complexity will also be O of L. The next operation to perform on a try is to search for a word. So we'll set current node to the root of the try. For each character in the word, if the character is not found in the current node's child nodes, we will return false. Otherwise, move to the try node corresponding to that character. After we have iterated through all the characters, we will return true if it is the word end. Otherwise, we will return false. The next operation is to check whether a certain prefix exists in the try. This operation is called starts with and it takes a prefix as a parameter. So the main difference between this and the search function is that at the end, there is no need to check for the is word end flag. It returns true if it successfully traverses all the characters of the prefix. The space and the time complexity of both these operations is O of L, uh, given that L is the length of the word or the prefix. Now that we have reviewed the key operations of a try, one obvious question is that we already have efficient data structures like hash table to store data with constant lookups. So what makes try so special? While hash tables are incredibly fast for exact word lookups, they fall short in other areas. So let's say for prefix searches, finding words with a common beginning like autocomplete is cumbersome with hash tables. Now, hash tables don't naturally order data, making it difficult to efficiently iterate through words alphabetically. As hash tables grow, collisions as multiple keys can be mapped to the same location become more likely. In the worst case, this can slow down searches to O of N. Tries excel at prefix searches and lexicographical ordering, eliminating concerns about hash collisions. Let's now solve a programming challenge. We are given a list of products and a search word. The goal is to find products that match the search word as the user types each character of the search word. So let's say this is our list of products and our search word is key. After typing K, all the products should be returned because they all start with K. After typing KE, all products except kite should be returned. After typing KEY, the products that will be returned are keyboard, keychain, and keynote. So we will obviously solve this question using try. And for that, let's build the try data structure for these products. The first word we will insert is keyboard. Starting from the root node, we'll sequentially add the letters K, E, Y, B, O, A, R, and D. The blue boxes after B represent try nodes. Due to space constraints, con I'm sorry, constraints, I haven't drawn the complete try node structure and the letter D is colored green to indicate the end of the word. The next word we will insert is keychain. Since the prefix key already exists, we'll start inserting try nodes beginning with the letter C. The next word is keynote. We will insert try nodes beginning with the letter N. The next word is kettle. We will insert nodes beginning with the letter T. The last word is kite and we will insert try nodes beginning with the letter I. Let's take a second to think about how we will approach this problem. Essentially, when the user types the letter K, we need to navigate to the try node containing K and then perform a depth for search starting with its child nodes to find all complete words. Likewise, when the user types KE, we navigate to the final node of the prefix and then run a depth for search from there to find all complete words. So that's the general idea. Uh, please do take a moment to think about it and see if you can write code for this approach before we review it in the next slide. We will add a function called suggestions to our try class. It takes a prefix and it returns a list of match strings. The variable current node is initialized to the root of the try. Next, we will enumerate down to the node pointed by the final character in the prefix. We will then run a depth for search and pass the current node prefix and an empty list as parameters. The depth first function will populate this list with matched words, which we will return as the output. Now let's review the depth first search function. This condition here checks if the current node marks the end of the word in the try. 
If so, it appends the current prefix to the result list and returns from here. So this loop here iterates over each character and its corresponding child node in the current node's children. After that, it recursively calls the DFS method for each child node while appending the current character to the prefix. I've included the GitHub link to this code in the description. Uh, please do check it out when you have some time. Uh, with that, we have come to the end of this video. Uh, do leave a comment if you have any question or if you have any suggestions. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you and goodbye.